Hello and welcome to our latest Railbookers webinar, Italy by Train, five top trips to take in the year ahead. Uh, my name is Matt and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. So just to run through the format of the webinar and how things will work, we'll just take a very brief introduction, first of all, for the benefit of anyone who's new to Railbookers to explain a little bit about who we are and what we do and how we do it, of course, uh, and then we'll look at those top five Italian trips that we recommend taking in the year ahead. So uh, let's kick things off with that brief introduction as promised. So why travelers love Railbookers and taking our train holidays with us? And the answer to that really is that there's a number of different reasons. First of all, we have the rail expert knowledge, or as we like to say, we speak rail. And that's really everything from knowing the best routes and combinations, the best timings, all those things that go into creating the perfect train holiday. You can book and travel at any point from today up until 2024. So particularly important if you've got that uh, bucket list special occasion coming up, something you've been looking to do for a long time, perhaps or looking forward to, uh, you can secure the dates and make sure you've got everything confirmed. Either way, we've got you covered. And really, any destination, any date for any length of time, if the train goes there, then so do we. No rail trip is too complicated for us to put together. It could be anything from a tailor-made rail holiday, a city break, a luxury rail experience, or a multi-country journey crossing over several different destinations, or perhaps extending your river cruise with some additional travel by train uh, pre or post your cruise. Lots of different types of holidays, uh, and all of them are things that we can help you with. We do have a variety of different digital brochures, which you can uh, peruse via our website. For those of you who don't know, that's railbookers.co.uk. Uh, and they cover a selection of different themes from our top selling independent rail holidays around the world to a focus on travel closer to home around the UK and Ireland, also Scotland, some of the most beautiful scenery in the world on our doorstep. Uh, and we also have brochures on luxury rail holidays if you're looking for something special to celebrate that special occasion perhaps or ideas on how you could extend your river cruise lots and lots of different brochures available why not take a look railbookers.co.uk is the place to head to and why book now well we do have a maximum flexibility offer that's currently in place for customers who book new reservations uh, and that means that if you do need to change your dates the duration of your trip or even the destination of your holiday up until 60 days prior to departure then you're able to do that one of the ways that we aim to take the complexity out of rail travel is by working directly with all of the main rail operators in europe north america and beyond and here you can see a selection of some of our partners and friends too uh, for example, Trenitalia over in Italy, SNCF, Deutsche Bahn, Swiss Railways, Eurostar, where so many of our trips begin, of course, and across the pond with Via Rail in Canada, Amtrak, and many, many more too. And what that allows us to do is two things. One, it means that we always have access to the very best prices for you. Of course, very, very important. Uh, but not only that, it also is how we're able to offer you all of these holidays up to two years in advance, meaning that if you are looking at celebrating that special occasion coming up next year or the year after, once you confirm with us, all of the rail is confirmed at the current year's pricing. So you're not going to be subject to any price increases that might happen in the meantime. Right, that's the introduction out of the way. So as promised, let's look at our top five Italian trips to take in the year ahead. Uh, and these are some of the most popular Italian holidays uh, that we're seeing people looking to travel on both this year and also next year too, if that's when you're thinking of traveling. Number one, uh, well, it's a perennial favorite here and a real classic combination of some wonderful destinations to visit and a classic rail journey. And I think if you're looking at taking a holiday by train, that's always the perfect combination that you'd be looking for, really, I think. Uh, so this is Venice and Florence via the Alps. The journey begins in London. Although, of course, if you'd like to add travel on from your local station down to the capital, then, of course, we can help you with that, too. Uh, and then from London, it's 
the direct train by Eurostarty to Paris, which is ran about two hours and 20 minutes or so. A straightforward change in Paris before taking a high-speed TGV Lyria through to Geneva. And it's Geneva that makes a perfect place to have an overnight stop and break the journey on this particular holiday. The next morning, you, know, you travel through some absolutely amazing scenery through the Swiss Alps. Also get great views of uh, Lake Maggiore as well uh, as you uh, uh, travel into Italy and arrive in Venice for a three-night stay in this unique destination. Uh, and whilst there, you'll have plenty of time to uh, explore with a walking tour, a gondola tour too, and many other activities as well. Then you'll travel by direct high-speed train from Venice to Florence, home of the Renaissance, of course, uh, and have a three-night stay there. Before you have a choice, you can either fly back to the UK or you can spend an additional night in Turin and then travel back by train through the French Alps via Paris and back home once again. So let's take a closer look at some of the highlights of this particular trip. Here we have Geneva, uh, and this is where you'll be spending the first night of the holiday. A uh, perfect place to break the journey uh, before that incredibly scenic journey the next day. Uh, and this is uh, the heart of things in Geneva. All of our hotels are close to the lake. You can see the jet d'eau spurting into the skyline at the back of the shot there. Uh, and it's a perfect location as well to perhaps have a stroll along the lake pre-dinner, post-dinner perhaps, uh, before looking forward to the rest of your holiday. And then next up, it's that most unique of destinations, Venice. Uh, really couldn't be anywhere else. One of the many things I love about Venice as a destination is if you arrive there by train, it really is an extra special experience because you walk out of the train station door at Santa Lucia and the start of the Grand Canal is right there in front of you. So you know you've arrived instantly. You get that wonderful feeling of place and it just couldn't be anywhere else and indeed arriving in any other way. So it just is the perfect start to the holiday. And here we can see one of the icons of Venice, the famous Doge's Palace, formerly uh, the residence of the, the Doge and the seat of government. Uh, the palace is now, it's a real symbol of Venice, I would say, uh, and really famous for that Gothic architecture right at the heart of St. Mark's Square. Uh, and you'll have a guided tour to learn much more about the history of Venice and the palace itself uh, as part of this particular holiday. Next destination up is Florence, and here we can see uh, some of those uh, Tuscan rooftops in the capital of Tuscany here, and the famous Ponte Vecchio, almost a living museum, the bridge that runs across the River Arno, which still has a, an array of really interesting shops and uh, different things going on, uh, and absolutely fascinating destination if you love art, history, there's some great museums here, uh, really, really recommended. And one of the, again, fantastic things about Florence, if you've not been there before, uh, is that it's such a walkable city. Uh, once you've arrived, you know, you might perhaps choose to take a taxi to your hotel, for example, but then you can really explore everywhere on foot in the city centre. It's very, very walkable indeed, beautiful buildings and just so, so easy to get around. A fantastic destination. If you've not been there before, these are two wonderful destinations that go really, really well together uh, and are so easy to visit by train as well. So if the, the thought of Florence whetted your appetite uh, towards all things Tuscan, then the next holiday might be of interest too. Uh, this is our Florence, Siena and Luca holiday. So really uh, homing in on that Tuscan area. In terms of how the journey works, well, it starts off very similarly to the, to the previous holiday, really. Uh, we have a lot of our holidays to Italy starting this way because it's just a wonderfully relaxed and scenic way of approaching uh, that great country with that wonderful journey that I mentioned before, travelling through the Swiss Alps along the Samplon Pass before you get to explore those wonderful Italian destinations. And here, um, again, you'll have that first night in Geneva, that wonderful uh, scenic journey the next day that we were just talking about. But then rather than travel to uh, Venice, you'll do a simple 
change of platforms in Milan uh, before heading down to Florence for a two-night stay. And from there, you'll spend two nights in Siena uh, and two nights in Lucca. Really charming destinations, lots of history there too. Uh, and you'll be able to admire the Italian countryside as you travel between them by train. Then, after your two nights in Lucca, again, you've got a choice. You can either uh, take the short train journey to Pisa and fly home from there. And why not catch a glimpse of the Leaning Tower on the way, if you fancy it? Or, alternatively, again, you could travel back to Turin, spend a night there, and then head back by train the following day. The choice, as they say, is yours. And again, it's Florence where we kick off the Italian part of this holiday. And here's another fantastic shot of the of the city, uh, the famous Duomo that's uh, looking down over the surroundings. Uh, and again, just to to emphasize how uh, how much all of the main sites and places that you want to see are so close together uh, and so easy to to walk around and admire the the Renaissance architecture beautiful buildings, lots of open-air statues and fountains as well. It really is a great city to explore and a very, very easy one uh, to traverse without, you know, too much too much walking or activity required. And we mustn't neglect the other two Tuscan destinations that we feature here. This uh, is the beautiful Siena uh, and the famous Piazza del Campo, which every year is famous as the location of the annual Palio horse race. Uh, lots of really nice uh, restaurants on this square. It's a great place to, you know, just enjoy that wonderful view with the famous tower and do some people watching too. Uh, and some great museums to visit in Siena as well. It's got uh, a lot of wonderful history. It supposedly once upon a time was established by the son of Romulus and Remus. So as you walk around Siena, uh, you'll see lots of symbols of uh, a she-wolf uh, bringing up her children, which is to, to harken back to uh, the supposed beginnings of Siena. Uh, and lots and lots of references to that as you'll walk around the city. Again, uh, it's a very, very walkable destination. You know, it's not as, as, as large a destination as Florence, but very, very easy to explore on foot. As indeed is Lucca, which is the, the third and final of our Tuscan destinations on this holiday. Uh, again, Lucca is particularly famous for its wonderfully well-preserved city walls, which you can uh, walk around the date from the Renaissance area, and you'll admire wonderful views looking over the rooftops like this one, and also looking out into the Tuscan countryside beyond. Uh, so you can stroll around the city walls, uh, date from the 16th to 17th century, many of them, uh, and they're all uh, tree-lined in many cases, and you get lovely views as well, looking out into the surrounding countryside. Uh, and as you stroll around Luca, you get that real sense of a destination uh, that really, where life has changed, probably not quite as much as it has in other places over the uh, over the over recent years. There's still, you know, uh, fewer glimpses of modern life, shall we say. Uh, than perhaps in other destinations. It's just a real, a real sense of place. And again, it's so, so easy to explore on foot. It's not a large destination for something a little bit off the beaten track uh, from your Italian holiday. Then this combination of the wonderful destination of Florence and Siena and Luca. Again, that could be exactly the sort of thing that you're looking for. Moving on to our next holiday now, uh, and this is another perennial favourite. This is our Amalfi Coast holiday via the Alps. So again, you'll notice a theme as far as the uh, arrival into Italy is concerned. So we have the same type of journey. We choose to have a night in Florence here, which is really to break up the travel on the way to the Amalfi Coast. But it's worth me mentioning here that all of our trips can be customised. So if you were looking to perhaps spend a little bit longer in Florence, particularly if you've not been there before. Really easy for us to change that to a two night or three night stay in Florence for you and make the trip a little bit longer if you'd like that. Uh, then from Florence, it's a uh, wonderful, the comfortable, the modern high speed trains direct to Naples and then on to Sorrento for a four night stay. And then again, you have the choice of either flying back to the UK from Naples or spend an additional night, say in Turin, and then head back by train the following day. 
And here is beautiful Sorrento with those stunning views of the Bay of Naples where we base uh, your stay on the Amalfi Coast on this particular holiday. Some great coastline walks, wonderful restaurants, and of course, uh, when in Rome, or when in Sorrento in this case, uh, the chance to sample some of the famous Limoncello. A really beautiful destination and that wonderful blue sea uh, and great views looking out over the bay. Uh, one of the activities uh, that we include as part of your stay in Sorrento is a trip to explore the ruins at Pompeii and Herculaneum. Really fascinating uh, glimpse back into a bygone era uh, before, of course, had the uh, destroyed by the uh, eruption of uh, volcano. Uh, and really having the benefit of a guide taking you around really does uh, kind of show you a little bit more about what life was like and what the buildings actually were that you're viewing and how people would have been going about their day-to-day -day experiences once uh, or, or prior to the eruption of Vesuvius. So a really fascinating uh, trip and an absolute must-do if you've not done it before. It's such an interesting experience, highly, highly recommended. And we also include, slightly different, uh, but another must-do when you're in this part of the world, a day trip to the island of Capri. Again, beautiful setting, uh, heading out by boat across from Sorrento, uh, and you get uh, a full tour around the town, around the island, including the famous Blue Grotto, uh, where the, the sunlight makes the water turn this incredible shade of blue, and also get some free time to explore as well. So, uh, using Sorrento as your base, but a real chance to explore some of the highlights of the region with Pompeii and Capri included as well. Again, if you've not been before, absolutely stunning part of the world uh, and a highly highly recommended destination to visit and a slightly different combination now with our rome and venice holiday and this time we have a slightly different way of uh, traveling to italy as well uh, once again we begin either in london or alternatively your local train station uh, and Eurostar journey over to Paris. And then rather than travel to Switzerland, this time we take a direct high-speed train through the French Alps this time to the city of Turin for an overnight stay. Then it's time to head down to the, uh, the capital, the eternal city of Rome, uh, and explore all the wonderful uh, historic monuments in that city uh, before traveling up by direct comfortable high-speed French Rossa train once again to uh, Venice uh, for a three-night stay exploring all the canals and history there uh, before either flying back to the UK from Venice or alternatively heading back by train. And lots of uh, different inclusions that we have here in activities. Uh, we have in Rome a tour of the Vatican Museums and St. Peter's. Uh, and in Venice, we have a walking tour, including tour of the Doge's Palace and Golden Basilica. So if you like history, uh, then this tour could be exactly what you're looking for. So Turin is the first port of call as an overnight stay, uh, famous for its Baroque architecture, much of it dating back to the 16th and 17th century. Uh, and again, if you've not been here before and you'd like to extend your holiday, it would be really easy uh, to have an additional night in Turin, perhaps to have a little bit more exploration time before beginning your onward travel to Rome and Venice. And on this particular holiday, we have the full sightseeing tour, as I mentioned, to the Vatican, uh, where you get to see St. Peter's, the Sistine Chapel, of course, and marvel at uh, Michelangelo's handiwork, and explore the Vatican museums and all those wonderful pieces of artwork and uh, the great collection that's been amassed by the Catholic Church over the centuries, including some of the finest examples of Renaissance artwork that you'll see anywhere, really. So an absolute must do if you've not done it before. It is highly, highly recommended. And again, having the benefit of a guide with you, I was actually uh, lucky enough to do this uh, myself a couple of years ago. Uh, and it really does, you know, just bring home a little bit what you're actually looking at, because obviously we all know, you know, some of the most famous parts like the, the, the Sistine Chapel, etc. But you really do just learn a lot more about what you're actually looking at. And it is uh, really, really beneficial, I think. 
And we should touch on, uh, at some point while we're looking at these holidays, the hotels that we feature. And to give you an idea, here's one of our featured hotels in Rome. This is the Mediterraneo Hotel, which is really easily accessible from Termini Station uh, and distinguished by its 1930s art deco decor. Uh, perfect location, really easy to visit lots of the main sites on foot from there too. Uh, and a perfect uh, location from which to explore Rome. Just a brief word on how hotels work. Uh, most of our holidays will be based on either three or four star hotels in each destination, but we do work uh, with every type of property from three star through to five. So what that means is if you are looking at, uh, you know, having a celebrating a special occasion, for example, and you'd like to celebrate in style with five star accommodation throughout, then that's no problem at all. You just need to let us know that's what you'd like. Equally, the three and four star hotels that are included in the itinerary might be perfect for you, in which case, of course, that's fine as well. Or if you do have that special occasion whilst you're on holiday and you'd like to celebrate in style in the one destination maybe that you're staying in whilst you celebrate that birthday or anniversary or whatever it might be, then you can upgrade in just one destination if you want to and just uh, sort of stick with the three and four star hotels in the other places. It's entirely up to you. Everyone you know, like something different from their holiday. And uh, all of those possibilities are really easy for us to do. All you need to do is just make sure you tell us what you're looking for. And yeah, talking of special occasions, the last holiday that we'll look at today is definitely one of those that we would recommend for that special trip you might have coming up. And it features perhaps the most iconic train journey of them all the Venice Samplon Orient Express. Now, there's lots and lots of great permutations of different types of holiday that we feature with this iconic train journey. You might just want to spend time in Venice after the trip. You might want to tag on a visit to Florence and Rome. You might want to include some wonderful scenic journeys back home through Switzerland. You might want to travel to Venice on board the Orient Express or travel back to the UK, whichever you want. We've got lots and lots of different ideas on our website, but here is a really popular option that we find lots and lots of people look to do because it combines that famous train journey, stay in Venice, that unique destination, followed by time to relax by two of the most stunning Italian lakes, Lake Garda and Lake Como. So how it works, well, uh, you start uh, at London Victoria Station, travelling in style, uh, and you head through uh, France uh, on board the Venice saint Orient Express, uh, enjoying some wonderful food, as well as the, uh, the luxurious surroundings. And then you wake up the next morning to stunning scenery as you're heading through Switzerland, then into Austria, and then you travel down into Italy before arriving into Venice, the next day in the afternoon. Uh, two nights in Venice before travelling by train on to Lake Garda uh, and Sermione and then on to Lake Como before an overnight stay in Milan from where you can either fly home the next day or you can take a direct train on to Paris and then on to London from there. And if you've ever wondered what life is like on board this famous train, then let's take a peek and find out. Here is the bar car, and in the evening, this really does become the social hub of the train as people gather to enjoy drinks and the wonderful surroundings, either pre-dinner, post-dinner. Uh, the pianist will be playing. Uh, the immaculate uniform staff will be uh, looking to attend your every need. And as you can see here, it really is like traveling back in time. Uh, you know, you can uh, you can just imagine that you were back in the, the golden age of travel, as you can see here in the a lounge car as well, where you can relax, uh, just take in the surroundings, admire the scenery, or perhaps get to know some of your fellow uh, passengers as well. Uh, it really, it really does feel like you are travelling back in time. And uh, in the evening, in particular, um, people will really get into the spirit of things, and it's. Uh, uh, you'll find that gentlemen will be wearing uh, uh, dinner jackets and uh, and, and a bow tie and uh, equivalent dress for, for ladies. And everyone really does enter into the spirit of things. So it's uh, it really does feel like something special and great. Just 
wonderful memories. I know that's a little bit of a little bit of a cliche, isn't it, to say it'll create memories that last forever, but sometimes I think uh, cliches are cliches because they're true. Uh, and this trip, it, it really, really does. It's very, very special indeed. Uh, as far as the, the cabins on board the train are concerned, this is what your cabin on board the uh, Venice Saint Plant Orient Express would look like when you board the train. Uh, all set up in comfortable daytime mode with large windows for you to enjoy the scenery. Uh, very, very comfortable indeed. And then whilst you uh, go for uh, one of the, the many meals that are included on board this uh, this famous train journey is certainly very well fed and watered throughout, uh, all of which, by the way, is f freshly prepared on board the train. Uh, you might even see them stopping occasionally at various stations to collect different ingredients along the way. Uh, whilst you're enjoying dinner in the evening, your cabin attendant, who's been looking after everything that you might like uh, or might request throughout the journey in the meantime, uh, he'll be beavering away to transform your cabin so it'll be ready for the evening uh, and then once you retire perhaps from the the bar car enjoying the piano playing uh, then everything will be ready for the evening and you can uh, relax and enjoy a comfortable night's sleep uh, and then the next morning you'll awaken to wonderful views of Switzerland uh, and uh, you'll be served breakfast in your cabin. So after staying in Venice we've got to uh, two wonderful Italian lakes to relax by. And here is the first of them. Here is Lake Garda. And this is Sermione, really a beautiful place from which to explore the lake. It's a little promontory that shuts out uh, onto Lake Garda. Uh, and one of the, the best ways to explore Lake Garda, or indeed any of the Italian lakes, is by boat. And Sermione makes a great base to do that. There are plenty of boat trips that will take you out around the lake which just give you lots of different views, different perspectives, and it really is the best way to admire the lake in all of its beauty and just marvel at the uh, the size as well. Uh, the castle you can see here, that's a must visit too. This is Rocca Scaligera, uh, which is one of Italy's best preserved medieval castles. And it really is, it's an absolutely beautiful setting, as you can see. And one of the ways that we should mention while you're traveling on these uh, different holidays around Italy that you can travel in style or upgrade uh, is on many of the train journeys, you'll have the option to upgrade to what's called executive class, which you can see here. And this really is uh, kind of all singing and all dancing first class. It's very exclusive. Uh, there's only six to eight seats available on board any one train. And you'll be seated in one of these really comfortable uh, reclining armchairs with footrest, armrest. Uh, you'll get a uh, meal and drinks included as part of the uh, part of the journey and you'll have your own dedicated attendant who will just look after uh, the six or eight passengers in this particular carriage and it really is the most comfortable way to travel in style around it it's available on many of the journeys that we've looked at today uh, so if you are interested in you know, traveling in maximum style and comfort it's well worth asking us about because it's uh, uh, it's incredibly comfortable and as you can see here it's uh, it had social distancing before social distancing was a thing uh, so uh, very, very exclusive, very comfortable. Why not ask us all about it? And the last destination uh, that we'll visit on this particular holiday, uh, Lake Como. Again, another really beautiful Italian lake. Uh, here you'll be staying in the, the old town of Como itself. Again, best way of exploring the lake is to head out by boat uh, and just admire you know, all the different uh, viewpoints, really take in the full scale of the lake itself. And you can also visit, uh, perhaps have lunch in or stroll around some of the other wonderful uh, towns around the lake, like uh, Bellagio, for example. Whilst in Como, I highly recommend taking a, a small funicular train that runs up by the lake up to the uh, hilltop town of Brunate, from where you get stunning views looking down on the lake. And there's a few cafes and restaurants up there where you can enjoy a meal or a coffee or whatever it might be whilst looking down over that wonderful setting you've got the alps in the backdrop it's absolutely stunning uh, and we can also look after some uh or arrange some walking tours for you as well uh, a really great way of uh, learning more about the history of the destination they can be private tours just for you or part of a small group whichever you prefer lots and lots of different options available uh, so again as with all of these destinations if there's any additional activities that you're interested in then just let us know what they are 
reminder that you can find all of these holidays and many more besides by visiting our website. Again, railbookers.co.uk is the place to go to. Uh, and you can either search by destination or you can even search by the type of holiday as well if you know what it is you're looking for. So, for example, if you would like to explore all those different Orient Express holidays, then you can search by luxury train holidays and then Orient Express and you can find them all there. Uh, so lots and lots to peruse. You've got those brochures available for download as well. So lots and lots of ideas or if you're looking for inspiration, of course, you can always pick up the phone and give us a call as well, whichever you prefer. And that brings our webinar to a close. Thank you uh, very much for joining us today. I really hope you enjoyed it and it gave you some food for thought uh, on some wonderful ways of exploring Italy by train. Uh, look after yourselves, stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully we'll have the pleasure of your company on another webinar in the not too near future. Thank you.